8,000 bucks I owed Google over a weekend because I put an ad in on Friday. I got too busy to check it. My own rule was obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. Got too busy. Monday, I owed him 8,000 bucks with no sales. Choose not to live in a world of filters. Realize your mistakes. Set the foundation for your success. Get some wins. Knucklehead Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Knucklehead Podcast. You've got with you today the Knucklehead Stephen, and I'm excited to have none other than Tom Antion here. Antion, the new Knucklehead. <laughs> well, I like it. He's the host of, of Screw the Commute Podcast, and I just learned that the longest, what is it, the longest standing internet marketing seminar called Butt Camp or Bum Camp, if you're in the UK, you're talking to the founder right here. It's Tom. There was about three of them at the time, but two of them are defunct. So that uh, I'm the one that's uh, left. Right. <laughs> well, I like that. So there, he comes from a, a background in comedy, and I don't want to I don't want to tell his story for him. But the idea here is uh, uh, Knucklehead Podcast, and I'm going to tell Tom this, and, hey, and those of you who are listening to Knucklehead, this is this is not new to you. I'm just going to rehash this for Tom, so he understands the origin of of Knucklehead. You know, in a former life, I built and scaled sales teams. And that's what I did ever since I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, and I had to run in with HR where she wasn't being honest. This lady uh, who I was working for wasn't being honest with my boss at the time. So when I confronted her about it, you know, she subsequently essentially played the passive aggressive card. And, you know, as most folks in HR do, and it, it, they're, they're doing their job. However, what we ran into was we ran into a problem uh, when it came to execution. And so I texted my wife exactly how I felt about this woman who was not being honest and being passive and all this crap. And I called her, I called her something I shouldn't have. And, um, <laughs> turns out I was texting her instead of my wife. <laughs> so I, I call that a knucklehead moment. And, <laughs> and thus that led to, to knucklehead podcast. And what we found is there's a bunch of folks that are probably in the, in the car right now, or they're, uh, they're between sales meetings and they're listening to this show. And they've probably experienced that same type of failure. They've experienced that same type of pressure. The walls are closing in on them. There's, there's pressure to perform, yet they're accountable for, for a steady hand in leadership. And they make a mishap. They make a mistake. They screw up. Or there's a, uh, a lapse in judgment. In today's world, it's very easy to do that because you could just press a button and boom, you're off to the races. Well, what we found is a lot of entrepreneurs and, and folks who are accountable for the results, they don't have a place to just talk about the things that they've screwed up and the things that they've messed up because everybody's always interested in, well, what did you do right? Tell me the secret sauce or, you know, walk me through your, you know, your know-how. And here we're like, screw it. We know that you're going to screw up. So don't be a beta about the process. Go ahead and start getting you some wins. And what are some wins that you experienced when things blew up in your face when you didn't expect them as an entrepreneur? So Tom, that's, that's the genesis of Knucklehead. And I'm, I'd love to hear you know, a little bit more about not necessarily how Screw the Commute got started, but how did you get started discovering the fact that you were an entrepreneur? Well, uh, before we get into that, I got you have me worried there for a minute. You're talking about execution with your HR director. I thought you <laughs> killed her. <laughs> that was uh, that was your knucklehead yeah. moment there for yeah. 20 years. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. That'd be, that'd be a tough <laughs> one to overcome. I'll tell you what. Well, uh, I grew up, uh, my dad was an entrepreneur. My dad actually put the first electric light bulb in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. He came from Syria on a cattle boat when he was a little kid and, uh -huh. um, and just had to make, he was head of household at 10 years old and just had to make it for the family. So he found entrepreneurial things to do. And so I saw that my whole life. Uh, I'm the baby of six boys. And so I had seen that my whole life and I was, I was stripping insulation off of copper and taking it in the, for, you know, 75 cents a pound back in the early days. And, You're kidding. And, no, and well, that was for class A copper, number one copper. The old crap copper was 30 cents a pound, but I was doing anything I could do. I sold my first, <laughs> I guess I'm a used car salesman. I sold my first used car at 15 years old. And I didn't have a driver's license or permit yet. So I bought it for 20 bucks at an auction and sold it for 180. Yeah. So, man, that's I thought, awesome. I you thought, made money. Oh, oh, yeah. And I was a kid. You know, I was 15 years old. That was a massive amount of money. So, so I was always doing stuff to try to, to figure out a way to make money and uh, screw the commute. You know, now that I started that a couple of years ago, um, I never actually had a job other than a, a little summer job uh, in college a little bit, but I've always had my own business uh, for my, I'm going on 43 years in formal business now, never 
had to deal with an HR director. <laughs> so. You can imagine the, the the perspective shift that a lot of the folks that probably listen to your show have to go through. I mean, they, they live vicariously through your words and voice, right? Because you you have the ability to uh, to talk about it from your experiences, but it's it's literally just retelling the story of how it is. It's, and the subtitle is how to get you out of the car and into the money. Because it. when you look at my resume, it's like I've, um, it's like looks like BS because how could one person have done so many things? Well, sure. if you subtracted all the time you were commuting and uh, going to work and getting dressed in the morning and making somebody else rich and put that into your life, just think of the things you could do. So that's that's how screw the commute down. So I want to touch on something that you just said, and I want to go a little bit deeper if it's all right with you. So the foundation for your decision-making, right, says all business is essentially just decision-making. It's can you extract an opportunity and expose it in order to create income? Not only, not necessarily just yourself in this one instance, but ongoing. I like the idea that you're talking about uh, of folks who, who have been in the car spending time. You said making somebody else rich. They're also, they're also covering their bases, right? They, they're doing kind of yeah. what they've been taught to do. Exactly. And, 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 and not that there's anything wrong with that. Some folks, you know, we can both agree, Tom, and you can jump in here if you like. But not everybody's the exact same. However, the commonalities between folks that are entrepreneurs is that they are making money. That's the commonality across mm-hmm. all entrepreneurs, all business owners. So in order to extract enough income in order to hit your goals, in order to make it, uh, your you know your workforce happy or keep your contractors employed or keep everybody you know marching to the, to the beat of the same drum, that requires a little bit of a little less of accidental success. It requires a little bit more intentional planning. So you can't be in business for forty three years and do what you've been doing without some type of plan, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not the, the, the long range planning kind of guy because I think somebody somebody said, "Don't worry if your kids don't know what they want to be when they grow up." It probably hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, I'm not a long range planner. Uh, I'm a, a short range, see what's a need in the marketplace that needs filled. And yeah. when you're on your own, you can move with lightning speed. See, I don't know, I guess it's not an explicit podcast, but I mean, the, the situation you were in in the corporate world, you have to have a two week committee meeting to take a leap. You know, so by, by, by this morning, when we're recording this, I got more done than most executives do in a month, you know, 100%, 100%. So, yeah. and, and they couldn't even do it by themselves because, you know, a lot of them are there from nepotism and, and they, <laughs> they don't have any skills, you know, they're just there. So you just talked about, that's interesting because you're talking about the, the, the psyche of somebody who's in that particular position, right? And so when you do what, what you do for work, the idea is your agility and your responsiveness to the need out there in the marketplace that's your competitive edge. That's mm-hmm. your value proposition to the marketplace. Those folks that are listening to you, fundamentally, they don't make decisions the same way. Not, and I'm just, I just want to, I just want to hone in uh, on what you said about uh, going to make somebody else rich, because I do believe that what you're talking about can almost be training ground. Uh, literally, they could use their vehicle, their commute, their mowing the lawn, listening to what you're saying as the, essentially the the training ground to kind of mentally go from where they are to where they want to go, at least what the initial steps are. However, you know that whenever you're first starting something out, you go at a turtle's pace because you're, you're doing it. It's something new. You're, you're almost hesitant moving forward. So how do you, how do you develop the inertia necessary uh, and also know that you're doing it correctly? Like, how do you stop and analyze to make sure that it worked okay when you're just getting started doing something like that? Well, you, you got to get very good at vetting people and then, Put your total emphasis on gaining knowledge rather than just uh, blowing money and getting money and buying everything because you don't know what it is. And people are so good at selling you crap nowadays and it's, we're surrounded by that. So you need to vet the people that are really credible, that are really doing it, not people that are telling you how to get rich and then they're driving a broken down Hyundai or something. Then you spend your efforts and, and money getting good training. For instance... You could go anywhere on earth and a basic website, they're going to start you at $1,500 and up, where that same website is $100 maximum for a world-class website. If you just knew how to put a WordPress site up, put a responsive theme, responsive means it looks good on tablets and cell phones, and we're able to write some uh, copy to make people want to look at the site. 
you know, so, so you just saved yourself, you know, uh, $12,000, you know, uh, over the long run, because these same people that sold it to you for 1500, you say, well, you need to pay us 200 a month maintenance. For what? You know, WordPress <laughs> updates itself and just the minor tweaks. So your knowledge saves you all this outlay of cash. So you can move uh, uh, in the beginning, get your knowledge, and then you will you won't make as many mistakes, which we're happy to talk about mistakes, which we will. But you, if you can avoid them because you had the knowledge, you're going to move much faster towards your goals. And my goal is, is to make people, uh, it's too expensive for them to go to work anymore. You know, mm. so I use the work and the money from work to finance your, uh, your business startup. You don't have to go to a bank to get a massive loan to start an online business. That's what my expertise is. But uh, once you get to the point where your side hustle or this business is as much as you're making it work, well, that's the time to say, you know, take this job and shove it because now you can put that extra time into your business and accelerate it even faster. Hey, you ever asked yourself why you haven't started a podcast? Well, I already know the reason. So do you. You don't feel like you're tech savvy. You don't feel like you got your message wired tight. And quite frankly, it's just, it's all this mystification going on. Quite frankly, uh, our process helps to demystify that. We're push button for podcasts. We're knucklehead. Why knucklehead? Well, we lead with the fact that you don't know what you're doing. We do. We've been there. We've actually been in your shoes. We take your spoken voice. We literally give a human voice to your website. You want to bring dead leads to life? Well, then you need to talk to knucklehead. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to take you through our process and we're going to help take your human voice and increase the process for you going from dead leads to life. How do I, how do, I do that? Well, you essentially just take your human voice, put it in a directory and let people consume more of you. Give your audience the ability to Netflix on you. They want to binge watch you. They want to binge listen. Give them the ability to take your voice along on that commute with them. So... You can get in touch with us, Stephen at Knucklehead Podcasts, or if you've got a really cool story, stories at Knucklehead Podcasts. You can find us on LinkedIn and on Facebook at Knucklehead Promotions LLC and get in touch with us. Don't be a beta about the process. Don't let the fact that you don't know prevent you from getting some wins. So don't be a beta, get some wins and contact us today. See you. No, I like that. So you said something that it caught my attention there. You said whenever it comes to mistakes, Sometimes people stop, right? So we're trained. If we go back to the fundamental of how the education system in this country works, and actually really worldwide, and I haven't, I haven't heard many exceptions to this rule, you're trained to not make mistakes. You're tra- you're literally trained. You have a hundred whenever you start your your you know your journey in school, so to speak, and this whole progression towards you know the eventual PhD or the MBA or whatever it is that you're looking for. It's all about maintaining kind of this this pseudo perfection. Right, it's all about maintaining the the hundred percent. Whereas in in business, to your point, if you're hyper focused in the beginning on knowledge, but yet you're trained to not make mistakes, there's a catch twenty two right there. Just even in the beginning. So how do you create an environment where it's okay for you to learn and okay for you to screw up and things blow up in your face? And then do you have an example of something that helped yeah, you mean, to kind of experience a breakthrough? Well, first of all. Uh, your whole life, you would not exist if it weren't for mistakes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that from your, from your parents. <laughs> That's so, fair. That's fair. Well, I heard this comedian say, she says, I don't know why they uh, bother about drinking when you're pregnant. She says, most girls wouldn't be pregnant if it wasn't for alcohol. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, but I mean, just to think about it, when you put your hand on a hot stove, you pull it back and then you don't do that again. You don't usually say, I think I'll try that again. You know, <laughs> that was great. No, you learned from the mistake. So the mindset is, yeah, mistakes are going to be part of the deal. But what did you learn from that particular mistake? And one that I can think of that, that kind of cracks me up is, you know, I'm a single guy. I'm a fanatic in business, work all the time. Ten years ago, I could have quit working, but I don't want to. I love this and I love helping people. And so I accidentally, this is really pitiful, Steve. Uh, I accidentally threw a teleclass on Thanksgiving. I didn't notice it was Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. <laughs> so everybody said, oh, Tom. <laughs> no, uh, I'm happy about it. So 60 people signed up for it. This is, I don't know, 12 years ago or something. And they obviously didn't want to watch Uncle Joe get drunk and scream at the TV, you know, I don't <laughs> for football. So I made $3,800 that day. 
So, <laughs> so that'll help your turkey and stuffing go down, you know? hundred percent. So, so from that point on, I, I started thinking, what did I learn from that? Well, I learned that at odd times I can throw training because it's a big world out there and not everybody has something to do. And so just this past Thanksgiving, I did it again on purpose, I, but I did it for charity. I threw a big blueprint to online success webinar and all the money is going to homeless. I'm going to personally take it down to Norfolk and Virginia Beach and the homeless centers, and I'm going to either buy stuff for people. I don't like the middleman taking all the money. You know, I want to yep. get it to the final thing. So so I did that on purpose. The same thing, I, I, I raised $24,000 for animal rescue. And a couple minutes, I was able to do that. So from that mistake that happened 12 years ago on Thanksgiving, Odd times is a good time to promote stuff, and it's especially good for charitable things. So that's what I did there. And then another time, I, I've done 3,000 speeches in 12 countries, and I'm one of the top there is in selling at the back of the room without being obnoxious, I might add. <laughs> All right. and yeah, that's so, a good pre-qualifier. Yeah, yeah exactly, way. yeah. So I had two packages. One was $5,000, and one was $599. And so one day, years ago, I forgot to promote the $599. Everybody bought the $5,000. And that was my, like, here's my old stapler to the head. Boom. Man. So I quit selling. I learned, I said, oh, man, instead of just saying, darn, I forgot to sell the $599, I, I looked at what happened. I said, I'm not selling the $599 anymore. They can buy it after the fact, but at the event, it's going to be the $5,000. So... So there was a mistake, you know, was looking back what the mistake was what and what are the results of the mistake. Now, in one thing, I'm in the middle of a giant mistake, maybe. I started the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country, probably the world. And it's been going okay, but it's like you dealing with the HR person, dealing with the government regulations. I'm ready to shoot myself every single day. But in the long run, I'm helping I'm military families with, you know, just recently we got approved by the Department of Defense for, you. Uh, for yep. military spouse scholarships. So now I'm thinking, man, I did, that would have never happened for me to help these military families had I not started this and gone through all this hassle. And then I got invited to the White House about a month ago. I'm up at the White House telling them about uh, how to you know, military spouse employment is usually sucks because the spouse has to take a crap job because they know you're going to leave. And then they move to the next place and take a crappy job. So with online skills, they can work wherever. So all this hassle and mistakes and boy, I shouldn't have done this is turning out to my original goal, help a lot of families. So but I'm right in the middle of it still. So. Well, Seth Godin wrote a book about what you're talking about, right? So the, the, the entire concept of the dip, right? And just mm -hmm. being able to stick with it through uh, the crap, so to speak, mm -hmm. or knowing when to just cut, cut bait and go on to the next one, right? So uh, in your mind, I mean, how many times have you kind of quit and restarted, you know, in order to kind of develop the, the, that mental resistance to the inertia that you can experience out there? How many times have you kind of gone through that process of, you know what? This is over. I'm going to go on to the next thing. And then how many times have you just kind of stuck with whatever the original idea was? Well, I'll, I'll switch that a little bit that it's constant. It's all the time. It's every day. In fact, part of the training and selling things is what we call split testing. Yeah. And the split testing is based on finding the losers. <laughs> and we, we have another mental thing called fail fast. You know, this is why I don't bother with search engine optimization anymore other than the, just the simple basics because you could go six or eight months to get any traction if you're lucky and then Google turns a, a dial and then you disappear off the face of the earth. So failing fast means you get really good at paid traffic so you can turn it on and off at will. Hmm, and so, so, yeah, and that allows me to fail faster because failing is good because it gets rid of the stuff that doesn't work. And split testing is finding the losers and finding the winners and getting rid of the losers. 
So a prerequisite to what you're talking about, though, in that instance, is you have already thought through the fact that you need a product or a service to be able to offer somebody, right? Or is it just paid traffic for the sake of learning? I just want to be well, clear no, here. For- uh, well, a paid traffic it can be towards an affiliate product, too. So you don't have to have your own. Well, you got to be better at it because the margins are uh, thinner. But when I say the margins are thinner, I mean, uh, I don't mean to be offensive about this, but you almost have to be a moron to not make money at 97% profit on digital products. And it cuts it down to 50% profit on affiliate products. So most businesses work at 5% if they're lucky, gross yeah. profit, you know? And so so uh, this is a great business end. And, uh, and we used to sell CDs and DVDs. We still do, but it's mostly digital now. So sure. uh, you got a very high profit business and if you can send targeted traffic, and these places like Facebook have invented all these targeting techniques where you can target almost across the street to your neighbor. You know, so that's where you get the knowledge, and then you can fail fast, find out what ads work. So we might make 15 ads knowing that only one of them probably worked. So in that process, in that process, for those of you who are listening, yes, we've used the term execution and targeting here, but we're, we're talking about tactics for marketing, not necessarily what you think it might be. So we're, you know, there are a few military terms that we've thrown out there a couple of times. So those of you who are listening, it's, it's important that uh, we're just, we're just being clear about, uh, about what it is that we're talking about. So can you, can you provide an example here real quick? When you say that you've come up with 15 ads, what, what was an instance where, um, you, where you didn't think something would work, but you made it anyway, and you tested it and it did work? And it kind of surprised you. Can you talk? Can you talk through a scenario Absol- like that? Ab- absolutely. So uh, when I do, let's say, a, wh- what I think is one of the best bargains for anybody out there that is trying to market stuff is called an in-stream ad on YouTube. In-stream means that it's the one that you can press, press the skip button. A lot of people don't know if they skip it before thirty seconds, you don't have to pay at all, right? So it's a and and keywords that would attract that video, I pay maybe five to seven cents for the same keywords on the regular search would be a buck 90 to five bucks, all right? So it's a good bargain, it's a good place to learn because you don't burn a lot of money while you're learning. But anyway, uh, so I have to uh, make these ads, these videos to attract military spouses to wanna check my school out. So. The one, one of them that I did was uh, called a Zoom cut. And a Zoom cut, uh, the, I don't know how many will see this uh, on the video, but a Zoom cut is me saying something, no, and then it cuts to me closer to you like, no, and then I'm, I'm right in your face, no. And I thought, man, that's, that's pretty much in your face technically, really. It's in literally, your face. Yeah, literally. And yeah. I didn't think it was going to work. It worked great. <laughs> so, so it was just, uh, uh, as opposed to me just standing there as Mr. Uh, school owner being all, you know, oh, this Proper. is really good for your military family. Oh, they, they Check out this out. picture of the photo op at the White yeah. House. Yeah. 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 See, so, uh, so that was uh, just one of the hundreds and hundreds that I go through on a monthly basis. You try a bunch of different things, especially things you don't think will work because you're usually too close to your own situation. And I'm not a military spouse. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And I'm not even in their age group by two generations. So me being so arrogant to think I know exactly what they will, you know, this is ridiculous. So you got to get your ego out of it and be willing to try a lot of stuff. But with the mindset, you know, most of it's going to fail. You're looking for the ones that win and some will win a little bit and some will win really big. For instance, I wrote a uh, eulogy book long time ago on how to do a eulogy at a funeral. I went for a month, you know, tried every different thing I could, failing like crazy. And I wish I could remember because this is, I don't know, 18 years ago. And then something I changed, it sold $42,000 a year for nine years straight. I can't remember because it was so long ago, but, but that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I tried, I kept going and going and going and going. Something yep. clicked that the, no one on earth could predict. You have to, your market will tell you what works, and you uh, get your ego out of it. One hundred percent. Well, I I think it's important to uh, uh, to maybe wrap with 
with this. I mean, two things here. First of all, it's it's interesting hearing you describe what is the setup as kind of experiments, right? So the experiment of what works and what doesn't, but then always paying attention to what didn't work so you can extract the learning lesson from it. You, I mean, you have a you have a process that you just described for those of you who are paying attention to what you just talked about. The idea, though, is with that learning, you can almost anticipate where things are, are headed. And when you said that you stopped paying attention to SEO, when you see digital marketing agencies out there pitching SEO as a lead product, how do you keep from, like I've heard it said from a, there's one uh, veteran business called Black Rifle Coffee Company. And they, Evan Hafer talks about it in the podcasts that, uh, that he's put out there about a time where, you know, a digital marketing agency was going to charge him 50 grand for doing a website and kind of create this entire process around uh, campaigns. And what he decided to do was just film them lighting 50 grand on fire and put it up on YouTube and was a, and it, it went viral, right? So the idea behind pitching SEO as a, as a lead product, you already know that that's essentially it's a play on the ignorance in terms of decision making mm-hmm. of folks that are out there. But what's coming next? What's the next thing in your mind based off of all the things that you've learned that's going to be the next SEO or what's going to be what's going to be the most relevant thing for for folks that are internet marketers to pay attention to? Well, I, I really think paid traffic is going to be around for a long time, but there's more places that, and that's already here and increasing every day with places you can advertise. Everybody knows Facebook. Everybody knows Twitter. Uh, well, not everybody knows you can advertise on Twitter, but the thing is, there's places like Reddit, uh, Quora, which is a giant question and answer yep. site. Yep. Reddit, you got to be careful because the people on Reddit will eat your lunch if you <laughs> say something stupid. Yep. All right, so Taboola, Outbrain, these are all places that can put you in front of massive amounts of people. I mean, millions and millions of people. So uh, that's just going to keep increasing the places you can advertise. Uh, but you got to get good at it. You have to obsess on it because if you are going pay per click and you put something in and you forget about it, you could end up with an enormous bill and then get no results. And how do I know that? <laughs> a mistake. <laughs> 8,000 bucks I owed Google over a weekend because I put an ad in on Friday. I got too busy to check it. My own rule was obsess, obsess, obsess. I got too busy. Monday I owed him 8,000 bucks with no sales. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. So that was my, uh, you got to really dig in and know how to turn an ad off, uh, you know, immediately. So I think it's not going to be different in that it'll still be paid ads, but the more places that you can advertise is going to keep expanding because that's a good revenue stream for them. And for you, you can target precisely uh, where you want to be. Well, I love the idea of taking your human voice uh, along with you. And essentially, to your point about the Zoom cut analogy, essentially, you're facilitating a human connection, you know, in a digital presence. And so the idea of, of whispering into the ears of your largely unengaged audience and activating through podcasting uh, and bringing dead leads to life, uh, that, uh, that thought process is, you know, to me, it, it makes so much sense because my... You know, my kids all the time, I've got an eight-year-old, right, who has a, a podcast called Kidpreneur Podcast because he's got candy machines all throughout uh, the local town that we live in just outside of Dallas. He's got candy machines, but he loves talking about the things that he's learning as an eight-year-old, as an eight-year-old yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. And, and other, other kiddos that are out there are, are going to be able to kind of hitch their wagon, so to speak, on to want to follow him just because they want to be able to kind of Netflix out on his on his content. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's good to start young because uh, they're brainwashing family. I mean, they have been for years that you got to go to college. You got to, and colleges, I have a whole webinar on how they're screwing people over. Uh, and people are, with MBAs are competing for jobs at Starbucks, you know. So, so that entrepreneurial uh, spirit as a young kid, you're doing them a great service because there's no, uh, a lot of people won't even know what this means. There's no, gold watch after 20 years anymore you know nobody's anywhere for 20 years to retire anymore so the more you can do on your own the safer you are for the security of yourself and your family and so even just that wrapped in thought you know and i I think it's important let's just let's just land the plane here whenever we talk about silos of information when you look at it you look at how can you you know, circumvent the construction of that silo or build your own silo, so to speak, of, of cash mm-hmm. um, uh, in your business. 
But that's, I mean, what is, what's existed before, uh, especially when it comes to advertising, you know, these ad agencies that have got these incredible relationships with, like there's a podcast that just came out called The Office Ladies, and it's produced by a, uh, uh, I forget the, the name of the agency right off the top of my head. But essentially, if you look at that agency, it's affiliated with a business called Midroll, Midroll, who's owned by Stitcher. And then, you know, you start kind of rewinding the clock, you, pay, you play the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, mm-hmm. and you find out the corporation that was behind producing movies and uh, advertising and marketing for the last hundred plus years. That's what's behind this particular vehicle as it relates to a podcast. So it's not, it's not as if it's everything's a level playing field. It's just being you know, mentally agile. How, how do you stay mentally agile whenever you know that there's existing structures and establishments that are out there that essentially can squash you overnight if you're not careful? Well, that's where when they tell you you're crazy, you know, you're doing the right thing. So you're doing things that they would never do. For me, as, as a, uh, you know, like a five or six person business, I don't have to crank a million dollars of promotion like JC Penney's or Walmart has, or the 10 million, you know, 20 million for promotion. So I can go where they would never think of going or would not want to go because the market is too small and I can get rich there because uh, they're ignoring it. So that's what you got to look for is those areas where you can fill a gap instead of, uh, now uh, in my seminars, I show all these different dating sites. All right, who's going to go out and uh, compete with Match.com unless you've got a you know, $10 million startup uh, you know, investment and all this stuff? Well, I'll tell you who. The people that started gluten-free dating. <laughs> you know, the people that started uh, tall people dating. People who started short people dating. Uh, there was another one, uh, farmer dating. <laughs> you know, so... Match. Uh, I think I actually is, saw that. Yeah, farmers yeah, only or something like that. Exactly. Match.com is not going after the farmer market, I can tell you. That's but fine. you get a couple hundred or a couple thousand people at 20 bucks a month, you know, you're making bank. I mean, see, so that's what I'm saying. You, as a small entrepreneur, if you can move fast, identify markets that are underserved, go in there and serve them, you can really, you know, do well. That's incredible. Well, I mean, I, I like to, to end there when you say you can find that market and develop the skill set that Tom's talking about here. Um, and obviously, there's there's ways that you can learn. You can you can reduce the learning curve. You can take micro learning courses. You can you can bounce questions off of Tom himself. Tom, how do people get in touch with you? And how can people find out information about your, your school that you're talking about here? Well, yeah, they should go to screwthecommute.com uh, okay. slash resources. And we'll also have a, a knucklehead page up there. So Actually, they should go to screwthecommute.com slash knucklehead, and then they'll uh, have the replay of this there also. And I got a freebie for them on, uh, remember I was talking about speed? Yeah. Well, I have a, an ebook I give away. We sell it for 27 bucks, but they can get it there. Uh, it's called How to Automate Your Business. And just one of the tips has saved me seven and a half million keystrokes. One, just one little tip out of the book. And it's how I run my whole business, all the automation techniques we use here. So uh, they can get that at uh, screwthecommute.com slash knucklehead. And then all of my other resources and contact information is there too. That's incredible. I did, the seven and a half, thank you for that, by the way. That's a, that's a great resource for those of you who are interested in developing speed and agility, but also understand that you're not just going to be you know, walking around the weight room. You're actually going to be seeing some results from muscular development and cardiovascular training, all the things that he's talking about that you need health as an entrepreneur. He's talking about saving you time, saving you money. And in the end, when you're saving time, you're saving money. So Yeah, and you're reaching more customers. You can handle more customers faster. And they've been jaded so much by a company saying, well, we'll get back to you within 48 hours. <laughs> 48 hours, that could be dead in 48 hours. I'm going to get back to you as fast as humanly possible. And yeah. that impresses the heck out of your customers or prospects. And then you've got a better chance of getting the business. 100%. Well, Tom, we appreciate you. Uh, Tom Antion from Screw the Commute. Anywhere else that uh, these folks should go, or is that direct? That's the best the place. It'll, it'll, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you just type my name in, our, our school was called the Internet Marketing Training Center cool. of Virginia, but it's distance learning, so people can be anywhere in the world. And uh, we give big scholarships to uh, military, first responders, and law enforcement. There you go. Well, for those of you who are interested, Tom told you exactly how to get in touch with not only him, but how to extract some of what he's been able to find through screw-ups and mistakes 
and how you can leverage that for yourself. I mean, the idea behind your time, you invest your time every single day, whether it's through entertainment, whether it's through learning, actually truly learning uh, education or edutainment, what, however you want to dis- uh, decipher it, you invest your time. And so we just encourage you here at Knucklehead to, to make sure that if you're going to go through the time and you're going to screw up, why not learn from somebody else's mistakes also? Uh, I've heard somebody say that a long time ago. That's called wisdom. Here, we just call it getting some wins and don't be a bait about the process. There's nothing that you can do that you're going to be able to accomplish anything significant unless you're willing to go out there and screw up. Unless you're willing to go out there and learn from the screw up, then that's what we want you to be able to get from this time uh, here with us. So if you like listening to Knucklehead, every Tuesday we come out with a new episode. Tom, we appreciate you taking some time. Anything else that you want to leave these folks with or is that a wrap? No, that was uh, what I liked at the end there is, uh, yeah, you gotta you got to step up to the game. There's no therapy dogs anybody's going to give you. Uh, for screwing up you're gonna (laughs) your your therapy dog is gonna be when your bank account gets big after you screwed up enough to figure out what works i like it i like it well i appreciate you everybody else we'll talk to you soon take care guys